Okay, structures. Structures are complex data types created by the user. As you can see, these are primitive data types. Integers, doubles, chars, these are all primitive data types. With structures, you can define your own complex data types. Actually, it's not that complex. You're actually using multiple variables together that makes it complex and you get a structure. So basically, you are defining your data type by using different types of primitive data types. You are actually stacking multiple variables together and putting them into a container. So structs are like packages, containers that holds multiple variables together. As we will see in our example, let's say we have a student structure. This is like a blueprint. We will define some features here using primitive data types and every object we created using this structure will have the same features. Let's say this structure has an integer variable which is ID of the student, a char array which will hold the name of the student and the double GPA variable here that will hold the student's grades. So if you define your structure using these features, just like you are creating an X from data type integer, you can create X using your data type, not something like char integer or something like that, your data type that you defined here. So you are defining your structure first, you are defining your data type first, and then you are creating objects from that data type. So every object will have the features that you defined inside that structure. So if you say this, just like an integer x having the value of something like five, this x will have the value of these three features. So x will have an ID and dot notation means ID of X. X is ID. You can say, I don't know, the ID of the student. Let's say something like that. And X will also have these features. So X is name, let's say Emre, which is my name. And X will also have a GPA, which is the average of his grades, let's say 2.0 because I'm a lazy student. So instead of X having a single value, this time X is a complex data type. By complex, I mean having multiple data in it together. If you run this code, a memory will be allocated for X by the size of these variables together. So if this is four bytes, this is 20 bytes, and this is eight bytes, a 32 bytes of space, will be allocated in the memory. Let's say this is my X. Now this variable contains all three of these features. So it will have a field for an integer variable here because it has one integer, a char array with 20 chars max and a one double. So here will be the ID of him and the other field will be the char array of him and the other field will be the GPA of him. So as you can see, however you define the structure, every object you created using that structure will have the features you defined in it. So you can increment the variables here, primitive data types inside the structure, and the memory will be allocated in total, according to here, in total of 32 bytes in this case, and then you can access to its features using dot notation and assign values to it. So my X will have an ID, a name and a GPA. Thus, I created a complex data type using primitive data types together. So this is basically what structure is. Okay, it's time to put our example into actual codes. This is the basic syntax of defining a structure. You are defining your structure type here with these variables inside and you're naming it here. So the name of our structure is student, as you can see. So any objects I created using student identifier will have these features inside. Just like integer x, this time I'm defining x to be the type of student. So as you can see in the picture, my X will have three fields, three features, three variables in it. One integer, 
one char array with 20 bytes and one GPA with double. If I want to set my X's ID to 1000, I just need to do this. If you want to assign numeric values to the fields of the object, X in this case, you can directly use this assignment operator. But as you can see, you cannot directly assign a string to an object's field. To overcome this, you first need to include string library here and you need to use string copy function. As you can see here, first you're giving the target of the string where the string will be copied to and then you're giving the string to it. So function basically copies the string to here, the x's name field. As you can see in the picture, it's here. So you cannot directly copy a string into a char array. You need to use this function. And then I'm setting my x's GPA to 2.0. So I have set all my values here. Let's print them one by one to the screen. The ID of the student is, I'm putting a decimal placeholder here, and I will print the x's ID field. And let's put a new line. In the second line, the name of the student is, I'm putting a string placeholder here, and I wanted to print x's name field as a string in this line and lastly the GPA of the student is I'm putting a float placeholder here and I want to print X's GPA field GPA feature so I'm printing the features of my objects one by one as you can see here I logically draw my X here like this like a package but in memory they are physically continuous not stacked up like here so they are more like an array, but the only difference with the array is every element can contain a different type of variable. So in reality, it will be looking like this. If you consider each square here as four bytes, it will look like an array. As you can see here, four bytes for an integer, 20 bytes for a char array, and eight bytes for a double variable. So the structs are like arrays that contain different types of variables in it. And after that, I want the size of my X objects with decimal by using size of function. So this way you can actually see the size of a one object that you are creating using your structs. If I run my code, as you can see, the values of the object X is printed here and the size is 32 bytes because we are using 8 bytes of double, 20 bytes of char and 4 bytes of int in the definition of my structs. But sometimes the computer may store specific data between these elements, between the features of these variables here. So it may not be exactly 32 bytes every time. It's not guaranteed. So if you need the size of a struct, the most certain way is to use the size of function here. And this is basically the structs. Thanks for watching.